Hello everyone. Unlike my last video, I don't sound like I'm gargling a Mr. Marcus 9-inch vibrating realistic dildo, so I'm thinking maybe I'll actually be able to put my points across semi-eloquently without sounding like I'm Jon Snow, knowing nothing except that Tarkov is dark and full of desync. Disclaimer! All of the topics broached in this video are opinions based on a collective of experiences garnered from a diverse group of players. Please keep this in mind as you disagree your way through this shit show of a video. Thank you. First issue I'm going to talk about is unstable servers and desync, surprisingly enough. Now, we all know this is probably the biggest issue faced by the community, and while many of you still preach the gospel of Nikita in saying that there is no network issue, there quite clearly is. Considering it's the lead developer slash CEO of the company saying this, you got to be at least a little bit worried about this game's future. Now, before you all produce sticks from your asses to beat me with, just have a look at some of the clips in the background if you weren't already. Now, I'm not claiming to know more than the network developers of this game because, quite frankly, a monkey with a typewriter could do a better job of explaining most things than me, but when I drop $140 on a hardcore first person shooter with no single player mode and permadeath where you lose everything when you die, I expect the firefights to go off without a hitch, considering it's the core mechanic of the game. People seem to forget that we are playing a game that claims it is in the beta stage, yet cannot get the most vitally important building block of its niche genre to work reliably. A fair and even playground where skill and tactics beats gear, where even the cheekiest of breakies with a macro of a dream can headshot some tactical fool with an M4 deck with more optics and moving parts than the Hubble telescope. As I do not know all that much about networking and netcode other than a few short papers I read on it, I am not going to dive into the specifics. I am simply making the point that a game so focused on its hardcore aspect and its foundation in reality would not spend the time ensuring that the building blocks it's propping itself up on are not crumbling beneath the weight of all the other construction materials that have been piled on top of them. How does BSG expect to build a stable rock steady product if the foundations are going to cave in before it's usable and ready? The second thing I'm going to discuss here is the optimization, FPS issues and RAM requirements. Now let's talk about the RAM issues first, shall we? To quote one of my friends, you know something's gone wrong when the alpha played better than the beta. Now I can all he already hear some of you screeching, Well of course it would, more things are getting added and you can't expect them to fix every little thing they break immediately. And you'd be right in saying that. Well, that is if the issues these updates are causing weren't degrading the base functions the game requires to work properly. Looking at you, desync. While well, setting in the loading screen for a match, Tarkov uses 9GB of RAM. In the menu it's 4GB, and in a firefight, RAM usage can exceed that of 16GB, although it usually caps at 14, thankfully. In what world is it considered okay for a game that relies on seeing someone first and getting the first shot off to stutter and completely stop when taking aim or firing around? And don't be saying it's my rig, because it isn't just me. For example, my friend's 4 month old computer that could rival Ultron's processing power still stutters when he aims down his dusty Vepers bent sights. Surely fixing this is more important than improving overall map performance. Surely it's making sure the thing this game is played for, that rush of bullets whizzing and shrapnel flying and hatchet swinging, the adrenaline, doesn't devolve into Microsoft PowerPoint with guns. Now, there is little incentive to bring out gear, even for me, someone with 8 million rubles in a stash less than a week into a fresh wipe, and that's because you're going to spawn next to someone and get killed because you weren't behind that wall on their screen, even though you were on another continent sipping margaritas on your screen. Back in Alpha, I could run any of the three maps, woods, customs and factory, with a constant frame rate and no stutter, but now you're lucky if you can walk down the health resorts halls and not have your game freeze. Of course, this isn't everyone's experience, but the fact is that many cannot even expect reasonable performance in even the most uneventful of situations, such as walking through an open, open empty forest let alone during gunfights. And I should mention, don't even try to play any map other than Factory if you have 8GB of RAM or less, you'll only end up disappointed with broken audio drivers. And that's actually true, as a good friend of, a friend of mine that I bought the game for, as well as additional RAM now, has had to reinstall his audio drivers twice, as well as the drivers for his second monitor after booting up into a woods match, as Tarkov had somehow broken them both. I know it's not as simple as saying improve performance re, as there are many variables such as render distance, environmental effects, loot spawns, scale spawns, etc, but it, will never be, but it will never be okay to remove AI from a map so that you can say it's optimised. <coughs> Interchange. <coughs> for, for some perspective, so far I've spent over $450 on this game. 
EOD left behind in two sets of RAM, one for me and one for a good friend who I also got the spare copy. And I've also held a giveaway for the standard edition of the game when the game went to open beta, so you can't say I'm not supporting it and I don't know what I'm saying here. Third thing I'm going to discuss is gameplay functions, quests and RNG. Dimitri, I want you to go find this key and get into room at Worker's Dome for me so I can you can retrieve package. Da, where is key? What is package? Sukad, it is not my problem. You can't find specific random key with no said placement to find package then I no sell you anything. Could you at least give me one net kit to help me find? Net comrade, I do not trust you enough to sell you basic medical supplies even though you have money. Why is this find and fetch based quest system with a backstory slash story worse than Halo 5's based almost entirely on RNG key spawns? And why is it even in the beta if we are supposed to be testing every weapon and item? I would love to know who thought it would be acceptable to send a grizzled PMC to find 30 loose cans of questionable meat so that you can buy a med kit that's not just made up of a sewing needle, rubbing alcohol and a couple of loose Xanax so that I can beat them to death with the useless gag accountants I am able to buy after handing in 30,000 spark plugs, 1 million morphine vials and 3 billion saluas. There is a special place in hell for whoever removed the ability to kill your friends as well because we all know how easy it is to find Uselex or specifically bears on shoreline if you can even run it at a high enough frame rate to kill anything, right guys? It's not as if that map is 75% dead space where nothing happens and most of the players aren't sitting in a bush jumping anyways. Although in saying that, I do understand why they made it that way. But as we are supposedly beta testers, surely spending so long just trying to find someone to kill takes it away from the testing aspect. For full release these quests are fine, but not right now due to the fact you're going to have to do them over and over again to make any real progress each wipe, it's just monotonous and boring. I will see that having to do quests to unlock certain items such as IFAX, SV-98s, BP ammo etc was a stroke of genius for full release, but considering we are supposedly beta testing, why do this? It makes no logical sense to me at least. This, in addition to the RNG key spawns, makes it so you must rely on luck to progress in the game world and that's just straight up bad game design. For a game based as much on realism as they need it to be, why the hell am I finding random dorm keys in a filing cabinet filled with forks, knives and packs of cigarettes? Why would a doctor need four devices that perform the same function to do tests in the same place? Why'd I need a key I found on a bus seat on a different map that spawned there randomly to get through a wooden door that for some reason I can't shoot at the hinges of, with the risk of attracting players nearby to me? Why do I have to refer to a key guide the length of a novel just so that I can find out that the package I got little to no usable information on in the first place is underneath the bed on the ground floor of a dorms with a locked door and an open window that for some reason my seasoned PMC operative contractor can't climb through? Why is this terrible game design slash progressing system allowed and why aren't more people giving feedback on it? Moving on, how about we mention the things that have not been fixed even though they cause a multitude of game breaking issues, such as, but not limited to, the grenade bug, strength levelling to run fast in Sonic the Hedgehog, players phasing through doors, hatchet running to set loot areas, pistol slash rifle glitching, weapons being nonsensically priced, and I could go on and on and on. Unlike my other video, I'm only going to be making 3 points instead of the 8 to 10 or so I made the last time. I'm going to reiterate my last video's ending points though. Uh, I really do love this game, but I do hate it at the same time. It's the only game of its kind and I really do want to see it do well, and that's why these videos exist. Why would I want a game I've spent over $450 on and over 1500 hours on since Alpha to fail? The answer is quite clear, I don't. Now I'm going to try and make one of one or two of these videos every month or two so that I can't just say I sat idly by while this game kept going down the shitter. Now that it is down the shitter, please don't quote me on that. I would love to hear from some YouTubers, not for my own popularity's sake, because quite frankly I don't give enough of a shit. I just want this game to be good and getting the problems there it's facing exposure is probably the only way I myself as a normal player can help. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I will see you all in Tarkov.